Orifices oozing onto objects, verticals voraciously visible, and Prusa's partitioning a word that starts with P but can mean nozzle. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 153. Let's get into it. <laughs> Starting off with a fan submission from Bear3D Tech saying, I wonder what may be causing these weird hairs. They don't look like regular string, good observation, because they're not. The print seems fine, but I hope this isn't material that was supposed to go elsewhere. Hashtag print fix at 3D Musketeers. Remember, if you want to submit your failures, since we're here to help you, you can reach out to us on all the social medias, although I mostly monitor Twitter and YouTube. You can make a YouTube video and tag us in it, and we'll be happy to help and maybe even feature it in the show itself. And if you do like this kind of content, make sure to leave a like and those sorts of things, because we do want to help get your printers back to printing with purpose. It's what this whole thing is about. What we have here is not the traditional stringing, and Bear 3D Tech has it on the money. It's not. This, as someone who got to me first, Ringo said, if they were more aligned, I'd say maybe it was because of time-lapse functionality. Can you send your G-code preview if it aligns with the Z-seams? And it definitely doesn't, but it definitely aligns with a time-lapse function. I agree. It looks like nozzle ooze from a time-lapse. We used to do time-lapses all the time, and then they became an easy thing for people to do, so we stopped doing them. But it, we'll put one right here that had this particular problem. It is a common issue on time-lapse rigs, especially when you're doing the smooth time-lapse where the nozzle moves out of the way, picture is taken, then it comes back and does its printing, that you'll get a little bit of oozing during that pause. Even if that pause is for like a tenth of a second, it can still ooze a little bit, and that then is re deposited onto the part when the printer goes back to printing. It's a relatively easy fix with a little knife, just go through and cut it off, but you will have a little bit of surface artifacting in that area. A great way to solve this issue is a sacrificial tower that is used for the actual movement. We used to do this and we would try to have camera angles so you wouldn't see them, but it was really the only way that we could keep this issue from occurring when you were trying to print at reasonably high speeds on machines that didn't have built-in cameras, right? We literally built a custom time-lapse rig to do all of this. You will see scarring on the prints because of this, and there's really no way around it other than really trying to dial in the settings. You can add a metric buttload of retraction. And that's often what we would have to do. But you would have a high chance of the filament getting jammed in the heat break when that would happen because it's expanded a little bit. So you had to play this weird game between this hardcore stringing that you had to cut off with a knife and potentially jamming your parts. The solution is that sacrificial tower that the printer will do a retraction move, move over to print it, then it will do its picture, it will go back to it, print it again, and then go back to your part. The way that we found to solve this was to print the tower at half the resolution that you printed your model at, and then have it take a photo every other layer. It's what worked for us, it might not work for you, do your own testing on that one but you could also just go with the don't move the nozzle out of the way because that is all of a sudden also now acceptable when it comes to doing time lapses so i'd like to know your guys' thoughts on this is it from the time lapse ringo thinks it is do you think it's from the time lapse or do you think it's from something else let me know you know where to put them in those comments next up a prusa that got so constipated it decided that a blowout was the right move woohoo Big summer blowout. This one comes via our Patreon Discord, which if you would like to join is available at the $10 tier and higher via any of the places that you could support us, which currently is PayPal, Patreon, and YouTube channel members, where you get to come hang out with myself and a bunch of the other 3D Musketeers crew and some awesome people there who go through various levels of frustration, like Ben here, who happens to run the company IPIND 3D out of Australia. Ben is a Sparky, as they tend to call themselves, an electrical engineer, if you will, who has a Prusa XL. He had a bit of a blowout when printing, and uh, yep, that's what he saw. This is, this is what he saw on his XL, and this is what happens when your nozzle clogs so bad, but your extruder says, nah fam, we can keep going. This is one of those weird problems where having a really, really strong extruder is potentially an issue. I would argue personally that I would like to see extruders start to skip before they can potentially damage the nozzle. This is the great thing about Prusa. 
Ben spoke to support, and they got him a brand new nozzle shipped to him. This shouldn't happen. To be clear, this should not happen. But it's nice that in the event that issues like this do occur, companies are going to stand behind it and get those parts out. And I think it was within 30 minutes that he had a new part on the way. Speaking of new parts, Prusa did just announce the upgrade to the Mark IV platform, the Mark IV S, and we went live for almost five hours to show you guys the Mark IV S live for the first time. I think we were the first channel to go live on it, which is kind of cool. I am I'm, I'm reasonably happy to say that we went live one minute after the embargo was up. But I will say simply because the XL has only single-sided cooling, and I'm hoping that the cooling from the Mark IV S, which uses a really cool wraparound cooler design with a much bigger fan now, it's actually very much akin to the Mark III platform, but it's a more powerful fan, and it's 5 volts, which is an interesting one, could end up replacing the fan on the XL. We're definitely not going to be trying it out very soon, so if you want to see that kind of stuff in the future, make sure to get subscribed and leave a like. But I do want to pass this one to you all and say, what would you do to solve this problem? We've seen this on multiple manufacturers that utilize a press method where the heat break is pressing. I've seen it on Revo nozzles. I've seen it on Nextruder nozzles. And for those who don't know, it should look like this, a singular piece. But with too much force, you can literally push these pieces apart. You could look at a method of staking it in. There's certainly some smooth area where you could stake all of that together and it would work properly. There is that flat area right above the copper where you could stake it if you wanted to, where it would be just like some sort of a punch or something to keep it from coming out. But I'd love to know, what would you change on this to make it more reliable? I feel like this is a Prusa heavy episode, but hey, that's just how they go sometimes. We got one from the Prusa XL users group with an individual saying, just wanted to share in case anyone else has seen this. My Prusa XL is down. Had a print running overnight and woke up to a mess on the bed and the tool loose on the bed. Started another one to watch and it did the same thing. One of the stepper motors stopped working, so instead of going in a square, it was going back and forth at a 45 degree angle. Contacted Prusa support, they are sending a new buddy mainboard. I have never seen this issue before. And I'd be really curious as to what would not only cause the machine to do this, but also really randomly do this. Is it overheating? Like there are so many potential options here, but if you don't know, with Core XY printers, if one motor stops, the machine will travel in a 45 degree angle. To move forward or backward in Core XY, both motors are required. And so when one motor fails, it will only go at a 45. But we can see it works a little bit and then it stops. This to me says it's a wiring or a heat issue, but it doesn't exactly solve how the tool gets knocked off. Because that one, I'm not exactly aware of how that could occur. I guess maybe if it slammed into one of the edges with enough force, theoretically, it could knock the lock out of place. But I have moved my XL so fast, it's lost steps. And it's never had that issue. So I'd like to know from you all that have Prusa XL single tool head or otherwise. At least, I, I, does a single tool head have the tool changer mechanism? I think it does. Anyways, if you have a tool changer from Prusa... I'd like to know, has this ever happened to you? This is the first case that I've seen. And we can see that there's a lot of comments that have some ideas, but they all kind of say the same thing. This is a crazy thing. Not any of us have really ever seen it, but glad that Prusa support is good. And the individual updated, stating that support sent the new board after it was replaced and the setup wizard was run. Everything seemed to work fine. I would say if I'm going to give a little bit of advice on this print, it looks like we have a bit of pillowing, so we might want to look at adding one or two more top layers, but I'm not going to be nitpicky on this. I'm glad to see it actually working. We can see that an individual had a similar issue, but looking at their part, it's not occurring in the same way. So is this potentially a skip step issue where the machines are moving too fast and it's slamming in? Or is this person having an issue with their tool coming undocked? I don't know. What was the cause? What do you think caused this? Could a buddy board like prematurely fail? Could something like that? I don't know. I'm going to pass it off to you all. What do y'all think? Let me know 
in those comments because uh that's one of the more interesting xl failures that i've seen in a while Last but not least, help with odd vertical layer line support and lines showing on the outside. Hello, can anyone tell me what's up with these lines? The print is going well, but these aren't parts of the print. It's like the support lines are bleeding out. That is a really, really good thing to say because that is exactly what is happening. I'm gonna take a look inside of a slicer so you guys can see it. this is the uh that crazy 75 degree overhang test that we ran for the mark 4 s stream this is it for the mark 4 but if we go over into print settings we can even use the search term we're going to look for infill overlap percentage right there so stock on a Prusa Mark IV S with input shaping, it's a 15% for infill and perimeter overlap. The more infill and perimeter overlap that you have, the more likely that you're going to have the infill poking through. Similarly, inside of Orca Slicer, under the Strength tab and then Advanced, we can see that it is also set at 15% for the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which is normally what we have loaded up with Orca. Now, this doesn't exactly stop it from showing if you're only using one wall perimeter. So this looks like a mask of sorts. For this particular one, I might add another wall or two. Look at reducing your infill overlap percentage to somewhere between 15 and 20 is normally good. When you get above 25, we find that it starts to poke through and anything above 25 to me is pretty much a waste of time. But I'd like to know, what do you use for your infill overlap percentage? I've always left it at 15, although I know back in the day with the Mark Threes before Prusa Slicer got really good and we were using Simplify 3D, it was set to 22%. Why specifically 22%? I have no clue, but it was 22%. I don't make the rules, I just remember things dumb things like how much infill overlap percentage used to be <laughs> so i'd like to know what you guys are using in those comments a huge thank you goes out to all of those whose names listed right next to me at the five dollar tier and higher thank you for what you all do making these videos possible Remember, if you do want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel you can do so by clicking those links in that description supporting us on the channels that you do or hey drop a couple of bucks in the comments as well that is always helpful thank you and a huge thank you to all of you that did join that mark for s stream that was a ton of fun but right below me will be the entire print fix friday series where you can see fails and how we fixed them and right next to that will be that mark 4s live stream over four and a half hours of yours truly having a bit of fun and miss amber shows up throughout it so you should go take a look there's an incident involving tater tots that's all i have for you all today stay safe out there don't forget to call your loved ones don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed and as always keep making awesome have a good one